I want to talk about an opportunity we already have, the upside of our aging population. For a long time, we have heard and talked about our aging population. We know Atlantic Canada is aging faster than other parts of Canada, and Canada is one of the fastest aging countries. The median age in Atlantic Canada is over 50 and is higher than the average across Canada. Our immigration policies are combating this aging population and our immigration rates currently exceeds the Canadian average. But we have work to do because the percentage of immigrants in our region, in our workforce, still lags, lags the rest of Canada by a wide margin. Immigration is not replacing our workforce fast enough. Men and women over age 55 is the fastest growing segment of our region's labor force. Prince Edward Island has experienced some of the best economic results across Atlantic Canada for the past few years. It is no coincidence that they have led the region in two areas, growth in immigration and in having retained the most workers over age 55 in that province's workforce. Those two combined have allowed the province to experience the region's highest GDP growth rates. It is those factors that may lift PEI out of this recession faster than other provinces, if we keep the course. I'm the CEO of a nursing home company in Prince Edward Island and New Brunswick. Our residents range between age 64 and 104. From all backgrounds, they've seen wars, economic depression, and experienced all that life has to offer. Many of our residents have shoes older than our head nurses. Our owner is 76. He was 64 when he purchased his first two homes in Atlantic Canada. The COO of the company is 83. We like to refer to our business as seniors caring for seniors. But we have a great mix of people. 30% of our staff are immigrants. Most are women, but we are working on balancing gender. Our nursing staff range in age from 20 to 80. Yes, 80. Our average age in our home's workforce is 46 and rising quickly. I'm 49. Almost everyone else on the management team is in their 30s. This wide range of ages around the table and through our homes brings a great mix of energy, new ideas, wisdom, and experience. What makes it work so well is the mutual respect everyone shares. There is no replacement for having the wisdom that comes from having people in your workplace with decades more experience and having people who reflect on that experience to bring out the true wisdom. I see mentoring relationships happening all the time. The 80 year old nurse has so much to teach the 20 year old. The 30 year employee has so much to share with the new hire. Diversity of sex and ethnicity is good, but diversity of age is golden. The experience, we experience natural mutual mentorship where the young teaches the old and the old teaches the young. Our seniors bring timeless wisdom and can apply it to modern day problems. And it is not just great to have seniors as employees. It is great to have them as entrepreneurs. As I mentioned, our owner and president is 76. He recently received an entrepreneurship award for the Canadian 50 over 50. A 2018 study from Sheridan College, Sheridan Center for Elder Research, determined that 30% of Canadians start up startups were run by those 50 and older. Although the media continues to depict entrepreneurs as tech savvy innovators 
in their early 20s, the Kaufman Index of Startup Activity identified that the highest rate of entrepreneurial activity in the United States is among the 55 plus age group. And this has been the case for the past 15 years. And the trend sh shows no signs of slowing down. Five years after opening shop, 70% of ventures established by senior entrepreneurs are still in operation compared to 28% of enterprises established by younger entrepreneurs. The world is changing for seniors and they in turn are changing the world. Today's longevity is historically unique. There is no blueprint for what to do with an additional 20 or 30 years. Seniors around the globe are designing their ways into new lives and the world is waking up to the economic impact of their experience. This makes the aging population the world's fastest growing and sustainable natural resource. Experience is a currency and understanding how to catalyze it across the sectors and generations is a new competitive advantage. Older employees and entrepreneurs bring a unique value proposition to the table. Their experience of knowledge that works, what works, what doesn't, brings a huge advantage to those who spend little time testing new ideas. Instead of approaching new problems with old solutions, their wealth of work and life experience can help teams discover new ways to make unlikely connections between ideas and insights. COVID-19 is one of many challenges seniors have overcome in their lives. Their experience and ability to reflect on past challenges will make them valuable partners, advisors, employees, and entrepreneurs. The age wave is not an economic tsunami, but a rising tide for all to benefit from. What we need to avoid and fix, ageism is the stereotyping, prejudice, and discrimination against people on the basis of their age. Ageism is widespread and has harmful effects on the health of older adults. For older people, ageism is an everyday challenge. Overlooked for employment and stereotyped in the media, ageism marginalizes and excludes older people in their communities. Like sexism and racism, ageism is everywhere yet it is the most socially normalized of any prejudice. We experience ageism anytime someone assumes we're too old for something, instead of finding out who we are and what we are capable of. Stereotypes are always a mistake, of course, but especially when it comes to age, because the longer we live, the more different from one another we become. Ageism in our region must be overcome. We're going to be one of the oldest populations on the planet. Let's not let ageism hold us back. Let's set some goals to have greater involvement from older, older adults. Yet we tend to think of everyone in a retirement home as the same age, old. When they could be four decades apart in age. Can you imagine thinking that way about a group of people between the ages of 20 and 60, all lumped together? Working is good for individuals, mental, and physical health. A strong workforce is good for the economy. We know that diverse companies aren't just better places to work, they work better. And just like race and sex, age is the benchmark of diversity. By 2050, one out of five of us, almost two billion people will be age 60 and up. Longevity is a fundamental hallmark of human progress. Longevity is here to stay.